Time for another mini amp from Fosi Audio. This one has a VU meter and more. Let's check it out. Over the past several years, these mini home audio amplifiers have become very popular and great sellers on Amazon and other places because you get a lot of bang for your buck. I'll leave a link in the video description to a playlist of all the home audio amplifiers I have tested in the past. Fosi Audio recently sent out this MC351, their latest amplifier, so let's open it up and see what's inside. Right off the bat, you'll see this user's manual. Unfortunately, it is very thin of information. There's only a couple pages per language, and it did not provide all the details that I would hope it would provide. Of course, you do get an optical cable here for digital connections to the amplifier, as well as a USB-A to USB-C cable. And I'll talk about the USB later in the video, the connection on the back of the amplifier. In addition, we have the power supply. In this case, it is a 32 volt, five amp power supply, which is 160 watts total if you do the math. Now, if you know this amplifier has two of the TPA3255 chips, this power supply seems well underpowered to me. But here is the amplifier, and notice the VU meter there on the left, very cool. It uh, has a slick Fosi Audio design, and I kind of like the way it looks. So let's talk about some of the features. It has a built-in DAC, high power with great sound, user-friendly control design, vintage charm, and exquisite craftsmanship. You big dummy! On the front of the MC351 is the VU meter. It appears to be for the front channels only. To the right of that is the input mode, which is just an LED that lights up beside whichever inputs you're selected. And to use the mode button here allows you to select between the Bluetooth, RCA, coaxial, optical, or USB inputs. Moving to the right, we have the bass and treble controls via potentiometers. And on the far right, we have the volume control as well as the power control. It is a click on, not press in volume like some of the FOSI amps. Overall, it looks pretty slick across the front. There are some additional controls that it doesn't have. I will talk about that later. Let's take a look at the back of the amplifier. Here you can see this section is for the input. We have Bluetooth, we have RCA, we have coaxial digital, optical, as well as USB-C. Then across the bottom, we have speaker outputs via binding post for front channels as well as subwoofer. That's right, this is a 2.1 amplifier. We also have a preamp output, stereo full range. You can use this with subwoofer or powered speakers or additional amp. And yes, it does vary with the volume on the front. Thank you, Fosi Audio. Also, we have the DC input, which accepts 24 to 48 volts. 32 volt, five amp power supply is what's included. I'm not really sure the 2.1 amp design for the US market. I'm not really sure who uses a passive subwoofer anymore, but there you go. You can see all the different inputs that are allowed as well as the outputs, and you can use the preamp out if you want to for a powered sub. The ratings are 165 watts by two plus 350 by one at four ohms. Now, of course, we're gonna test that out to find out what the true power output is. As far as dimensions go, for the width, 13.8 inches, for the depth, 9.2 inches, and for the height, 3.6 inches. Now, for the part they can't hide from us. That's right, the true power output using the amplifier dyno. As you'll see here on the left, we'll show the power output in watts in the middle, the ohm load on the right, the voltage of the dyno, but you can forget that because we are using a battery bank to power the dyno. Hold on to your butts. Now here as we power up the amplifier, begin by turning it to the right, you will see the LEDs light up here for the VU meter and I'll also go between the selections that we are on RCA. We're gonna do the front channels and of course we're gonna use the included 32 volt five amp power supply, which again, I think is insufficient. And here are the front channels. These are the ones we're gonna be testing. Testing at one kilohertz. It's rated 165 watts by two at four ohms. As you guys already know, this is 130 watt power supply. So <laughs> we don't expect a whole lot and we're not getting it. We're getting literally less than 80 watts per channel. So about half what the ratings say. And I'm not really sure what Fosi was thinking because they're usually not this far off with their ratings, but Anyway, this is the true output. Let's try it uncertified up to the clipping point. That first test certified was to 1% distortion. 
we get around 82 watts or so per channel here at the uncertified test. Next up, we'll do the dynamic test, which sends a pulse one kilohertz tone into the amp to check the amp's dynamic capability. These TPA chips do not have a lot of dynamic capability, but we got 97 watts per channel. Again, well shy of the 165 by two it's rated. Next up, we'll try the sub channel of this amplifier. Again, it uses a TPA 3255 chip. Here it is on the back of the amp. It's just these two connectors here. And again, we're gonna use the included 32 volt, five amp power supply, because that's what you're gonna get when you buy one of these amplifiers. Let's try it at four ohms. It's rated 350 watts. We're gonna test it at 40 hertz. Certified test goes up to 1% distortion and, uh-oh, <laughs> 80 watts. That's right, it's rated 350 and we got 80 watts. That is pretty sad, my friends. Let's try it uncertified up to clipping. See if we can bust 100 and no, but we got like 95, 95 watts on the sub channel at four ohms. And then finally, we will try the burst track. Again, this is a 40 hertz burst track. Simulates kind of like a kick drum. And we're still shy of 90 watts. 88 watts total for the sub channel. Kind of abysmal based on the ratings. And here are all the measurements, including eight ohms for the front channels, which it was not rated. We got about 42 watts per channel. And yeah, I know what you guys are thinking right off the bat though. What about a 48 volt power supply? Well, if you watch all the way to the end of the video, we will try one and see what kind of power we get. Now this amp has tons of different inputs. We are gonna try the Bluetooth here. So we'll switch it to Bluetooth and we'll get out the cell phone, see how easy it is to connect. Once we get the cell phone out, you'll see here at the bottom, Fosi Audio MC351. Connects right up, no problems. So let's try out some music and see how it sounds. in the Savard High-Q six and a half inch subwoofer on the sub channel, see how it sounds. Now way back in the late 1990s, Cambridge Soundworks came up with this portable system called the Model 12 is actually a stereo inside of a suitcase, include the subwoofer in the suitcase itself, have the amplifier inside, as you can see here, for the 2.1 output, all the different sources, headphone jack, all that fun stuff. And it had a power supply and everything you needed inside the box, including the satellite speaker. So what I decided to do is kind of replace the amp that came with it Let's try the FOSI MC351 and see how it sounds with this setup. The sound was pretty good overall, but I do have some things to talk about when we get to the cons. You'll see that come up here shortly, but first, Let's talk about watts inside. That's right, tiny chips off the old block inside this amp. Now getting in this amp was a challenge, I must say. There are four screws on the bottom. That's the obvious sign of what you have to do first, but after that, it took me forever to get the bottom of this thing pried off. I had to actually use a chisel. And then you have to take off more screws to take the top off, and it wasn't really apparent which ones you needed to take off, but I finally figured it out. 30 minutes later, we got inside the amp. Let's take a closer look. Here on the bottom, you can see where those chips lie. 
as well as some traces here going to the inductors before you get to the speaker outputs. And we flip it around, you can see the huge heat sink there in the middle as well as some fat capacitors, 4,700 microfarad capacitors there. And yeah, there you can see all the tiny chips. Those are for all the different inputs, uh, Bluetooth, et cetera. And here you go, closer look. This is actually using the macro mode so it can get way up, take a real close look. We decided to go ahead and take the screw out here so we could pull off the heat sink and take a look at the chips. And there they are, tiny, tiny TPA 3255 chips. These are great sound quality chip amplifiers, class D, that are using a lot of these newer mini home out audio amplifiers. And I really like the TPA 3255. I think it's one of the best. This big heat sink helps keep everything nice and cool. I did not get the thermal camera out for this, but I can tell you it did not get hot overall. Now let's talk pros and cons of this Fossey Audio MC351. First up, it is a three channel amp with two TPA3255 chips, multiple input sources, does have a VU meter, we asked for that before. Preamp output, yes, it varies with the volume control. Thank you, Fossey. Crossover on the power sub output, and the sound quality overall is very good, even if you just use the two channel out of this, sounds great. Now for the cons, it does not have a selectable high pass filter for those active channels, which can be a problem with small speakers. USB thumb drive can't be used. It has to be used with a computer because there's no controls on the amplifier itself. The 32 volt five amp power supply is lacking. The measured versus the rated power, crazy in this case. No volume for the powered sub channel. You really need that independent control for that. Two VU meters would have been better. There is no remote control if you're using this as a home theater device. And the user manual is very basic. Overall, I'd have to say this thing not having a volume control on the active sub channel is definitely a problem because you can't set that where you need it. Um, that's definitely something Fosin needs to add in the future. Thank you guys as always for watching. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. As promised, we're going to try the 48 volt 10 amp power supply that should have definitely come with this amp. Let's try the front channels and we'll try it certified to 1% distortion. Here we go. One kilohertz tone. What can we get? Oh, there you go. 121 and 110 versus 79 and 77. So about 50 more watts using the bigger power supply. Now let's try the sub channel again, using the bigger power supply. Here we go, certified test using the 40 hertz track up to 1% distortion. What are we gonna get? Oh, definitely more than 80 watts. Oh man, 193 versus the previous test. We got 80 with the smaller power supply. Can't be cheering too much though. It's rated 350 watts at four ohms and we got 193, so well shy of that rating. Fosin needs to work on that, but thanks as always for watching. More videos coming. Till next time, Big D, I'm out.